Hi everyone, Amy here. Aside from our usual filthy language, please be aware that our discussion in the documentary itself touches on mental health challenges, addiction, and diet culture and disordered eating. Thank you and enjoy the show. everyone welcome to little miss recap the podcast where the good news keeps on coming and the good feelings and the feel good <laughs> today we're doing where's wendy williams and for this documentary i had to call on my pop culture millennial consultant leslie dj good morning leslie good morning amy happy friday happy friday it is so good to see you i know i miss talking to you it was it's been a long time been a long time. Been Tell a long time. everyone what you've been up to because you've been doing some fancy smarty pants stuff. Well, that's the thing. Like, I have a podcast called Sinister Girls. I haven't been as active with it because I'm finishing up my dissertation. And yeah, you're getting, getting your doctorate. <laughs> I know, right? In psychology, go figure. And just getting the IRB approval, which is the internal review board of the college to approve oh, yeah. like the data yep. collection. It has been so taxing and going back and forth. And then now it's like recruiting. And then I had to hire a recruitment mm. company because I couldn't find participants. And then that had to get approval. It's been a nightmare. So I have no time to like rock and roll and it sucks. But I'm almost done. You have no time to like, you have no time to like watch trash TV. I mean, I always make time for that. It's part of the degree, I think. I mean, I <laughs> Psychology. Come on. Um, all right. So I called you in today because we want to talk about the new documentary that's on Lifetime mm -hmm. called Where is Wendy Williams? And I will I I wanted to cover this because I hear a lot of people talking about it. And it's kind of that intersectionality of mental health and reality TV. Right. Yeah. Like where where do we draw that line? What what is, what are the ethical concerns around that? But also, I really didn't have a lot of idea of who Wendy Williams was. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fair because she was mostly known. I grew up with Wendy Williams and the fact that I'm from New York and she was a New yes, York radio host yes. and everybody knows her through the radio. And mm -hmm. then when she got on TV, more people got exposed to her. And I remember being like, they're going to give Wendy Williams a TV show. I thought it was so shocking because she was always getting kind of into trouble, pushing the boundary. She's always been compared to Stern in the sense of being shock value or the queen yeah. of all media which she dubbed herself right when they were calling her the queen of all media i was like mm. well howard and like her this. have yeah. talked about this and he okay. actually made fun of her like openly on his show like he's had her on the show like many years ago they had since falling out i don't know about now in terms of where they are mm -hmm. but i remember when she got inducted because at some point in the documentary they mentioned you're inducting the radio hall of fame or whatever howard stern was going to be the first inductee of that and he declined it because he said that was stupid that that's some guy's basement so he poo poos okay. that whole thing so he makes fun just of like he all. just like he yeah. poo pooed podcasts yeah because he's on the cutting edge of all technology i guess <laughs> but yeah and but i like howard stern it. but like dude you sound like you're 107 when he's like going on yeah about there's some stuff. times where i'm just like dude you're not you're missing it yeah. but then he loves yeah. housewives and he has great takes on that so I, I can't fault him i like howard stern so i used to listen to howard stern when i went to state college when i went to mm -hmm. penn state because we got him there we didn't get him in scranton when i was growing up so that was what 95 96 97 i thought he was a misogynistic scumbag i was yeah like, I, I didn't like him this. then right i like him now mm -hmm. i feel like he has really become he has i have a term on my show that i call growth okay he, this is not growth. <laughs> i feel like he's had actual growth he's been in a lot of therapy like he does yes. therapy like three times yes. a week for years yes. So I still think there are problems there and he has a lot in his past to atone for. Yep. But I think that he, I, I agree with a lot more that he says now and his interviews like during COVID were amazing or right before yeah. COVID. He was really in his heyday around 2017, 2018 when yeah. he had his 60th birthday party and he was interviewing all these great musicians, but he interviewed Dan Rather and they talked about the Vietnam War for like two hours. I was there. <laughs> oh my god they're talking about jfk i'm like i could listen to this all fucking day because that's like he my little like weird that. love yeah mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. He loves that as a you know veteran of the Vietnam War. He was not. He just says he was. <laughs> stole a valor. Stole a valor. So yeah. so Wendy Williams was kind of around the same time. Would you say, yeah. or was she a little later? A little later. Like I remember Wendy Williams more like in the early aughts, kind of. Okay, because when she had her talk show, I feel like that had come around. So I used to watch like talk show TV when it was Oprah. Mm-hmm. And I even I used to watch Phil Donahue growing up, Sally Jesse, you know, Aww. Maury, those guys. She was much later, right? Yes. This was like the early aughts that I'm remembering. Okay. Um maybe because after two thousand six yeah. when I had my twins, I don't remember seven to ten years. So she <laughs> it mu- if it happened between two thousand six and like two thousand ten. Yeah. I was not sleeping more than two hours. Because she got her show, I think, like around 2010, something like that. But she was on the radio, like in the early aughts. She was really making waves to that. Okay. All right. So I didn't really know who she, like, I knew who she was, but I didn't know kind of how iconic she was and, like, what she was. So what would you say is her, I don't know how to describe this. Like, if I asked you to describe the Wendy Williams show. How would you describe it? Like, is it close to like a Maury Povich type? Is it close to like a uh, Oprah type? Is it close to somewhere in between? Like, is she it's scandalous? Like, is she, what does she do? Here's the thing. She was very unique in the sense that what she wanted to do was similar to what she did in her radio, which was kind of have like these kind of talks about celebrities and kind of like all the stuff you see on TMZ or the gossip okay. blogs and, and okay. talk about them as hot topics. So okay. she would do a little bit of the tabloid thing and then she'll have like interviews as well. And then she'd do the regular daytime segments. But her thing was why people loved her was that she was so relatable because she did have a lot of afflictions and she would talk about it. Like when she was going through her divorce, she talked about mm-hmm. it because it was everywhere. There were so many yeah. scandals and like where her husband at the time was cheating on her and had a yeah. mistress, you know, everybody was talking yeah. about that, but she, then finally she addressed it. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. people just started to like her because of that, that softened her up because she would often say outrageous things about celebrities to their face and they would get mad at her. Yeah. So, so who did she have some good feuds with people? Like who are her feuds? Would Do you remember? Well, we, we do see it in the, in the documentary black China. Like they ended up black getting China, along. Yes. Yes. That was you, a really moving scene. That moment. Did you clock that? The moment when she's going like, yeah. And she's like nodding ahead. And then that third nod, it's like it clicked with black China yes. that she was not all yes. there. It's like it finally clicked. Cause then it was yeah. a different, like, okay. And then she cried. Yeah. It was like, yeah. she got it. Yeah, it was crazy. So I have some notes, but I kind of think, you know, the way that we have to approach it is just kind of top level, you know, yeah. bird's eye view. Because there's four episodes, right? Four episodes. And they're long. They felt like an eternity because there was so much going on. So the documentary. So I I read an interview in Vanity Fair with the producers. She's a producer. Her son Mm -hmm. is a producer. I think her somebody else is a producer in her family, too. Maybe her sister. So she had hired this crew or they had been in talks with her because they thought she was going to have a podcast and a comeback. Mm -hmm. And so she like a lot of people felt this was gross because who is this documentary team? But she actually hired them. And. One of the interviews or one of the questions that they asked the producers was, you know, did you feel that you had had overstayed your welcome more or less? Right. That this was borderline exploitative of what's going on. And the producer, the director, whomever it was, said, um, actually, I think she felt better when we were there. And it almost became a situation where we were afraid what would have happened when we left. And I thought that was really interesting. Because yeah. that flips the dynamic on its head that I had thought was going on here. But then you kind of see that because there are points where she's like yelling at people. And then like even her manager is kind of saying like, oh, she doesn't like people here. She's like, no, but you guys are OK. You guys are fine. Yeah. I'll give you a thousand yep. hours. Yep. Because she wants so, to be famous. So we see her in the beginning before she goes to there, uh, not therapy, rehab, essentially. Right. Yeah. And she's like, show, she's real obsessed with her lymphedema and her feet. Yeah. And which is a serious condition, a real illness. I know yeah. people who have it. It's, it's intense. So she's very, you know, talking a lot about her feet, talking about her sister, Wanda. Yeah, Wanda. 
and how Wanda doesn't like her her relationship with alcohol and you know she doesn't know if she's going to ever talk to Wanda again she seems to be a strange like she's and then then we get the black screen of death and it's like Wendy yeah. went away after this and then yeah. she came back so that's kind of how episode one opens correct yeah, and what was interesting about that was that I was watching it and I paused it and it was minute two two nineteen, mm-hmm. and that's when Wendy first breaks down crying after she flips off the cameraman for not wanting to see her boobs because she was talking about how right. now that she's free from the Wendy Williams show she's free to do whatever she could show her yep. boobs you want to see and they're like no that's okay and then she flips them off yeah and then she starts crying and then Will is hugging her. I had an icky feeling about her manager from day one. From the I did first too. Instant. I did too. Yep. Did not like it. Um, so this takes place. Most of the documentary takes place. She's lost the show. Mm-hmm. She's lost her mother. Yeah. She's been divorced very publicly and humiliated by her husband literally coming home and being like, my mistress had a baby. Yep. She has lymphedema in her feet, which is super painful. Yeah. And she's an alcoholic. Like, this is a lot. It is a lot. And I was even thinking as they were going through those things, I'm like, that's a lot for anybody to handle. And then we go into COVID. You know, we see COVID. So COVID really did a number on her because she didn't have her show. So we we meet her now. She's kind of lost everything. And she thinks she's going to mount this comeback with the podcast. Yeah. And so her manager's will, he was a jeweler? A jeweler. That was weird, right? Like Who celebrity jeweler. Guy? I don't know. Right. Right. And so, they met at a club, apparently. Yeah. I just thing. have questions here. Like, who is this guy? Do we trust him? Throughout the entire documentary, guys, th- there's this constant narrative of Wendy needs to be kept away from alcohol. She's struggling yep. with her sobriety. You know, we, we, we now know, like, it's come out in hindsight that she has alcohol induced dementia. We know this yeah. now. And, but yet, Somehow, Leslie, there's always alcohol in the house. There's always someone willing to enable her. And who is giving her the alcohol? And I wrote, it's got to be Will. Yeah. How and is I she think on camera, that? he's saying, no, 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 no. Maybe he gives in because it was just relentless how she would get that he'd just be like, oh, fine, or whatever. Or maybe it was the publicist. Maybe it was somebody else that we didn't really see because we don't know how many people are in and out of her house. No, we have no idea. And I know exactly where that building is. I know that exactly where that is. I was like, oh, my God, I know this building exactly. It's um, it's the building where the Friends store is, the Friends experience. That's that building. Oh, okay. She doesn't live live there anymore. Right, she sold it. She doesn't live there, so. So- she she also does this thing where she says six year old six years old from Asbury Park a lot, which I feel like this yeah. is something that um, I remember when my grandmother had dementia. Like this is something that they do where they they hang on to like a core memory, yeah. and that becomes like a touchstone. And I think that's what was going on with her because she kept saying it throughout the whole documentary all the time. Six years old from Asbury Park. Six year, like it was. Yeah. It was repetitive, and I wondered if that was going on. And also, I was thinking about her obsession with New York. And I known people from Jersey. They've always wanted to be more of a New Yorker. So as soon as they mm-hmm. could get out of Jersey, they go to New York. And I think that's mm-hmm. part of her story too. Where it's yeah. like, oh, six years old, Asbury Park. Like she's proud that she has a street named after her, but she's a New Yorker in her mind and it's her soul. Yeah. Like that's where she's lived. So yep, she always wants to come back to New York. How about that scene where Will takes her to Asbury Park? That was intense. Like when the fans saw her and it was just so crazy. Her going to the house, her childhood home. So it was really interesting when she went to Asbury Park. Asbury Park. I want to talk about it from kind of like a a racial aspect, if we can. Mm Because we get to Asbury Park and there's this like white businesswoman who had the street named or was yeah. on the council to have Wendy Williams way, right? She seems to have no idea who Wendy is, a la Amy Archer. Okay, I'm not throwing shade <laughs> at her. She seems to have no idea who Wendy is, but yet is like, let me get a picture with you. Let me get a picture with you. Then you see these young black girls come out and yeah. they love her and they're like we look up to you you're amazing and then one woman is even saying to her like 
we know who you are. Like yeah. we know who, and it was so moving to me. And I was thinking like how amazing for those young girls to have that role model of somebody who, who made it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you just see that she is such an advocate of black women and black girls. And I think they respond to her yeah. in that, like, even when she talks about like the wig, right. She's like, I'm yeah. going to take my wig off. I'm going to encourage other women to take their wigs off. Like she's such a good role model for black women. I will say that. And, they seem to really love her and connect with her in that way that we see the one, the people we yeah. see in the movie. Cause and she was unapologetically herself and she yeah. would, she could stand toe to toe with a man and, and like read him to filth. Basically she yep. has like the power of a drag queen. Like she could read you to filth. And yep. I love that about her. I love it too. And it's, it's just like a, I think everybody regardless of, of race or gender, loves a rags to riches story right like yeah. this is a kid from asbury park which is not a very affluent area nope and they made it she made it and it was really it was it was very heartwarming to see those young girls just being like we love you we love you i loved it so much yeah so just now seeing the part of like the little house that she was in and then you yes cut back to her massive apartment in yes. Gramercy, you're like holy sh like that's a big change well that's like i live in scranton and joe biden grew up with my grandfather like he lived oh here God. till he was 10 years old and they lived in the green ridge section of scranton and it's like just this normal average looking house yeah. and my grandfather kind of ran with two other boys you know they would play baseball and stuff in the streets and one of them was joe biden and the other oh one God. was bob casey's father the the governor casey so like i'm like what happened what happened to my grandfather <laughs> why did he join what in did he think? <laughs> <laughs> oh so, like, it's so interesting yeah. though but like he like that's a, ki a kid who whether or not you agree with joe biden's politics like he became president yeah he was just good. a kid a regular right. kid like everybody else mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah you know what was um something that when i first heard this that she said this in the beginning of the doc it made me chuckle and then after that it made me sad when she was like i love tito puente okay tito puente was a percussionist from cuba mm -hmm. not vodka she meant tito vodka oh she meant titos and tito puente was like a famous <laughs> percussionist <laughs> So I laughed. I was like, oh, my God, I know what she means, but that's no. Uh, so we see that her son, Kevin, had had her in Florida, and she seemed to be doing a lot better. But then the bank grows suspicious of the spending that happens mm -hmm. while she's there. And she spends like $100,000, but it's him spending it. Yeah. And so then we hear from, I forget who told us this, but somebody told us like, well, this is average for kevin like his uber eats bill is a hundred thousand dollars a month and i'm like dude what are you uber eating you're eating diamonds like buy some Velveeta macaroni and cheese and cook that shit what are you He's doing eating fabric j eggs <laughs> <laughs> what is happening what is he doing and his rent is eighty thousand dollars a month where is he living in a mansion in the sky? Well, he's in Miami, and I guess Miami. Well, Miami is expensive, but damn, eighty thousand for a child—that is a child. I'm sorry, he's in his early twenties. He's a fucking child. So no. there is this guardian appointed to oversee Wendy Williams' finances and basically her life choices. This guardian, the the name has been released. I'm not saying it here because this guardian right. does not want to be known. So if you want to look it up, go ahead and Google. Um, this guardian is independent to the family. They are with a law firm. Yeah. So like they have taken this, this kind of gets to the Gen Xer in me. I don't like this at all. They have taken all of her autonomy away. Like she yeah. has no control over her own life, but they claim that they did this because somebody in the family is getting real creative with the finances. Yeah. Now, do you have any idea what's going on there? You know, that was the thing, because then I was thinking, like, so who is the bad guy here? Right. Is it these right. people, the publicist, the manager, or right. is it the family? Because the family, even though they're showing that they show her best interest, like, I love her niece. I, thought I love her niece. Great. Love her. Yes. She was so smart. And even towards yep. the end, towards when uh, the diagnosis comes out and everything, she's so mm -hmm. methodical and she's very thoughtful in her words. I would trust her. 
I feel yes. from her family. Yes, me too. Me too. Her son, I feel like he's still a little too young and maybe he'll be a little reckless with his money. But yeah. I feel like I would trust her. I just feel like she, that is her only son. Yeah. If she wants to give him all her fucking money, he's going to get it anyway. Yeah, he is. Like, why not give it to him while he can enjoy it? Like, unless he's stealing it from her. Yeah. But I didn't get that impression. Yeah, that was the thing. It doesn't seem like that was the case. It was just that, yeah, he was spending a lot of money. But again, you see it within the documentary where she's just giving him things. Like, she just wants to give him stuff because that's how she shows her love. It's her love language. Yeah. 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 I wish I had a rich relative whose love language was gift giving. I know. Like, just (laughs) come over and give me. (laughs) So we see a couple incidences in these first few episodes. And one of them is when she's trying to buy the vape. Oh my God. So she's, she has this, uh, this publicist and the publicist's name is Sean and she's a young girl. I mean, this girl's probably 25, right? 26, 27, maybe. She's really young. Sean, I think Sonati. Cause she's like, Sonati. Yes. And she's rotten to her. Mm -hmm. Wendy is rotten to Sean. She tells her she needs to lose weight. She makes comments about her body all the time. And it's yep. it's triggering to me anyway. Yeah. And, um, you know, Sean just takes it in stride. She's like, whatever. And she wants to go buy a vape. And she's like, this is the store we go to. You drive past the Wendy Williams show and you go to this store. They take her to that exact store. She claims it's not right. She makes them drive around the block again. Go past the Wendy Williams show. Go to the store. They do it again. They do it again. They do it again. They do it. Again. It's it's bad. It's hard. It's, it's really hard to bad. watch. It's hard it was to, to the point where like the cameras had to stop. Like production yeah. was like, okay, you know, we're done for the day. Yeah, they did this for hours and just going back around. She's, and he, and she would berate her, just like you're an idiot. Do you not know this? This is mm-hmm. not it. And they're like, this is the. And the driver's like, this is the same. Look, we just passed here. No, no, this is the one. Like on the fifth mm-hmm. turn. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my god. We see her constantly talking about alcohol, constantly. Alcohol, Mm -hmm. liquor, 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 alcohol. Will claims to be respecting Kevin's wishes on camera. So on camera, Will's saying, look, Kevin doesn't want her to have a drop of alcohol. You know, we see him kind of trying to uphold that. Yeah, going to like the the restaurant, being like, just bring her apple juice or whatever. But again, somebody's buying her alcohol. Yeah. Okay, so now we get to episode three, and we see her niece come. So the niece's mm-hmm. name is, I have it somewhere, um, Alex? Is it Alex? Yes. Yes, Finney. So, yep, mm-hmm. so Alex Finney is Wanda's daughter, mm-hmm. and she comes, and this scene is so beautiful. So through most of the documentary, if you guys haven't watched it, and I recommend watching it, I think it was yeah. riveting. I was riveted by it. Um through most of the the uh, the docu series, the first two episodes anyway, all Wendy's do she's irate with everybody, and she berates yep. people, and she's screaming at people, and she's nasty. Like she's just very direct. Mm-hmm. She's abrasive. Would you say she's abrasive? Absolutely. I mean, her nail tech comes in, and she's just trying to do a primer on her. She's like, "No, you're an idiot. Take that off." It's like, yeah, what she, is happening? She is a hard like. For me, having this be my first exposure to her, she struck me as a hard woman to love, right? Yeah. We see a very different side to her when she's with Alex. Mm -hmm. And it's the first moment where you really see a tenderness come out of her. And um, Alex comes in. She's sitting on the couch. They're talking. Then Sean comes in. And Alex freaks out. And she's like, I'm not sitting here with this woman. And they have it all, like, she's still mic'd up, but she's off screen telling production, I don't know who this girl is. I don't know what her intentions are. I don't, I will not sit here with her. Like, get her out of here. And then Alex starts to cry and tells the camera, like, there are people around my aunt that I don't trust. Mm, And that we don't know. And something's going on here. Yeah. That's why I feel like I could trust her because she is aware of this. And when she first had that adverse reaction to the publicist, I was like, why is she acting like this? But then later on, when you see what the publicist does, you're like, oh, she was right. She sussed it out from the beginning that she is no good. So my question is the, um, the help me, not the executor. What's 
The Guardian? Thank you. The Guardian. Um, the Guardian seems to be under the impression or have, or have at least floated the theory to the public that it's somebody in the family misusing funds, right? Right. Or is it somebody else? That's the thing. I don't really know. Because is now it one of like these a, people? Now there's like a new lawsuit or something going on because the Guardian is suing A&E for the, the documentary. They wanted the documentary stopped. Yeah. And also, apparently, the guardianship has not been paying some of her taxes because her apartment, she bought, according to TMZ, she bought this apartment, the one we've seen in the documentary, in 2021 for $4.5 million. And she has unpaid taxes from 2019 to 2021. So it's like half a million dollars, right? The unpaid yeah, taxes? Exactly. And so she, her guardians are in charge of that. Like they took over around that time. So why wasn't that paid? Right. So it's also exactly. that. It's a little weird. Well, and then the narrative also, like, when, and again, the source for this part is Wendy, and we don't know how accurate this is, but she's like, they're telling me I have no money. Is it possible that she doesn't have the money? We don't know. That's, we don't know, but that could be possible because if you're telling me that her son's, you know, monthly Uber Eats receipt is $100,000, then... right. A lot of money is going towards that child and he's spending and, a lot of it. And that and she's apartment is expensive as hell. And she's Wendy Williams. She's she doesn't have Oprah money. No. She doesn't have Howard Stern money. No. You know what I mean? Like she's she's going she's not paid billions. No. She's probably paid millions, but she's not paid billions. There's yeah. a difference. So now we see um oh, oh, hold on. Let me back up. Now we see that she leaves to L.A. without telling anyone. This is a big moment wild. in the documentary. Yes. She leaves and Will freaks the fuck out. Will Rightly seems so. to have been hired maybe by or at least is in touch with the Guardian. Yeah, I think that Will works closely with the Guardian because I think at one point he did say, like, you're putting me in a bad position with the Guardianship. So I think he kind right. of like is the man on the ground, like boots on the ground to the yeah. Guardian, I think. Now, the publicist, Sean, seems to have come from a lawyer. Because remember, she said I was appointed by a lawyer mm -hmm. to handle the fallout after Wendy got out of rehab or whatever. Right. So and, and that sort of the the press and the public shenanigans that Wendy had been up to when she got out of that are laced throughout the documentary. So we see like yeah. the footage of her falling asleep in a store. We see the footage of her being drunk on the street. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. Like it, it there was a lot of bad PR years there. Yeah, there were. Yeah. And you notice how she was able to twist everything in her answers, which is like, we're looking at you. We're like, we know that you're lying to us. And then even the yeah. producer at one point is like, that's a spin. He's like, no, well, that's what's really happening. It's like, it's not like, yeah. are you as delusional as she is? Yes. So now we find out that she went to L.A. and she went with Sean. Mm -hmm. And this is interesting because Sean claims that Wendy called her terrified and said that she needed to get out of here and that she didn't like Will. And she was scared of Will. And Will is screaming, she should be scared. <laughs> it was interesting to me because, yeah. again, this is the this is as as explicit as I can think of of a case of a non-reliable narrator right because right. she literally has been diagnosed with dementia so we don't know what is real and what isn't so is she right. scared of will because then there's moments where she's like i love you will and i trust you and she's yeah. warm with him and we don't know if sean's telling the truth like it's just unreliable narrators all around <laughs> it's very dicey situation and i feel for her son for kevin jr oh my god me too having me too. to like see all that play out in the press and from afar and not have a say yeah because kevin's whole thing guys is he's fighting this guardianship because he wants to be her guardian and he wants and her to she, live in miami with him yeah and it's interesting because we learned that right before the guardianship happened he had her power of attorney yeah and i wonder if that's what triggered this like i wonder if he was Maybe t look, Wendy Williams does not seem like she's a minimalist when they no. were in Miami and he was taking care of her. And we do have video of it. And she seems mm -hmm. way better 
I remember seeing that play out in the press. I remember on social media seeing the video, like her first video resurfaced. She's walking on the beach. She's with her son. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, she's mm-hmm. looking good. She put on some weight. She looked healthy. He had her on a vegan diet. She wasn't drinking. She was exercising, getting to all her doctor's appointments. She was coherent. This, this kid was taking really good care of his mother. Mm-hmm. And he had power of attorney throughout the time, which is common when you are taking care of a parent, because you have to sign off on medical stuff, you have to do this, you have to do that. Yeah. I wonder if him just taking a lot of money out of her bank account for whatever, for yeah. their living, for her, triggered this. That's what I'm wondering. And if it because makes he, him look suspicious to the bank. Because he also said, like, I never take anything. She would tell me to do these things. I was following yes. her orders. And I could see in a world where she'd be like, take out $1,000. Buy yourself something cute. You're mad yes. at me. Like, I could see that scenario. 100%. 100%. Wendy Williams is somebody who likes to take care of her family. Yeah. We learn later that, you know, when she was 26 and she was working in, was it Florida? Yeah. I think she it was, was Florida. Just, yeah, she bought her parents a condo because they didn't want to stay cold in the winter. Like she, yeah. and she didn't have a lot of money at 26. Like I think she was like on the, on a local radio station. Yeah. So like Wendy Williams is a giver and she's somebody who likes to take care of her family. So I could imagine her down there in the bosom of her family. Right. Mm-hmm. Just being like, Oh, that's on me. That's on me. You pay for this. Yeah. You get this. Absolutely. A hundred percent. But Wells Fargo is the one who triggered this. Yeah. Wells Fargo, which I have my money with. And now I'm like, mm, oh, no, take them out. <laughs> You're not keeping my $600 Wells Fargo. How dare you? How dare you? That's mine. <laughs> okay. So while she's in LA, she keeps talking about this meeting that she's having with NBC. Oh my God. I'm so cringe. And she supposedly taught like the whole theme again of the, of this is that she's making a comeback and mm-hmm. she's having a podcast. And there's even a part where she's like, um, she's talking to Kevin and she's like, we're doing the podcast now. It's happening now. And I think they show us that Mm -hmm. to kind of show her confusion. But I'm like, this is not, this is common confusion among older people. My mother wouldn't know what a podcast was. If I, like, she knows what it is because she listens to mine. But if I followed her around with the camera... And was like, we're doing a podcast. She'd be like, okay. <laughs> like, she yeah. No. Like documentary <laughs> podcast. Like I, I feel like that confusion is normal. Anyway. So she's out in, in California and the family is not happy. She's in LA. Nobody is. Nobody. She's interviewed and she says, Will is mean to her and screams at her and she wants a new manager. Okay. Yeah. Sean takes Wendy. This is one of the pivotal scenes of the whole documentary. She takes her to lunch. First, she takes her to the Hollywood Walk of Fame to see her star. Oh, my God. I felt so many things on that moment. Oh, my God. Tell me what you felt. Watching her stand there on her star. And just, she looked a little out of it. I don't know if she was taking it all in, if she was trying to process it. Or she was yeah. overcome by her success at the moment mm-hmm. or being seen because she stood there and she was looking like afar, like she was not really there. And then yeah. fans come by and and then she like sparks back to life. All of a sudden yeah. she has a personality and she's like on. And it was so fascinating to see and to see the love those kids had for her. Agreed. It really touched her and she felt it. It was it was so beautiful and sad to see because they're really going like, when are you coming back with your show? We miss you. We need you. And she's like, I'm in talks with so-and-so I'm doing this. And everybody's like, yeah, she's coming back. Everybody's thinking everything is fine. Cause that's what she's saying. But we yeah, seen I mean, hours of that not being the case. I found those moments like so touching. I agree yeah. with you. Like just seeing her connect with her fans. I was like, wow, this woman really means a lot to a lot of people. Yeah, I know so, people, I have a friend who used to go to her taping, show tapings all the time. Like, he really? made it like a thing. He went to hundreds of tapings. Like, so he's a true fan of Wendy, yeah. Hmm. He just okay. loves her. So she asks, okay, so now they're leaving the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And they go to lunch. And Sean just lets her drink. Let's her drink. Now she's going to a meeting with NBC. Mm-hmm. Sean's letting her drink and they ask her, they interview her in front of Wendy. So I'm, and and let me just finish, then I'll tell you where I'm thinking. So 
she's like, oh, I'm not worried about her drinking. She knows how to stop. Wendy knows her limits, Sean says. Now, I'm of two minds of this. I wonder if Sean is just so young. There's no way she knows how to stand up to this woman. Yeah. And I wonder if her answer would have been different if they didn't interview her in front of Wendy. Yeah. To me, she is putting her first in the moment. She's like, this is my client. I'm in front of her. We're doing everything she says and she's right. That's basically yeah. the attitude yeah. she had. Because she did give kind of give her like a little glance when she was drinking. She was kind of like, and then she kind of looked away, tried to pretend like she wasn't concerned. Did you notice that? Yes. There was a point yes. she gave a little side eye and then she pretended like she wasn't concerned. Yes. And I'm just wondering, like, if we got her off off the camera, you know, off to the side, if she would have been like, I'm not fucking standing up to her. Are you kidding me? You've seen her abuse yeah. people. Like, I'm not doing this. They don't pay me enough. Like, yeah. I just wonder if that because you know yourself. How old are you? Are you are you 40? Not yet. 39. Yay. OK, <laughs> so, you know yourself like at 25 years old, could you have ever stood up to somebody who I had know. such a, a a power over you, you know, no. in your career, socially, whatever. I couldn't. I, I couldn't. could barely do it now. I could barely do it now. And I'm in a situation where I can't legally get into, but in a situation with like a former employer where it's, it took yeah. years for me to stand up to them. Right. So, exactly. And you would not have done that at 25. And that's why I I'm wouldn't like, have done that two years ago, let alone at 25, you know? Right. I mean, I, it takes women, especially a really long time to found, find our voice and our power. And I can't imagine this girl has it. And also, anyway. she's a, a young black girl. Wendy Williams is a very strong, famous black woman. She probably has a lot of respect for her. And she probably yeah. sees it more as like an auntie figure. So she yes. can't talk back to an auntie. Like, you don't do that. No, no, absolutely not. Hey, everyone, stay tuned. Little Miss Recap will be right back after these words. So uh, she asks Wendy if she wants to go to the Oscars. And Wendy doesn't know what the Oscars are. And yeah. there's little moments like this throughout the whole documentary. After, So they go in the meeting with NBC. We don't see it. But after the meeting, uh, Wendy says it went very well. And she seems lucid in, in this moment. She's like, it went well. She, but then she goes, I showed them my feet. Uh, the feet thing is real. Yeah. She's hung up on this. Mm -hmm. And we learn that NBC has never called for the talk show. Yeah. So... Wendy gets back to New York and we see Will waiting for her and he just, that's another thing. New York represents some kind of safety for her. Yeah. Because immediately after this meeting, she's like, I need to get back to New York. I need to get back now. Yeah. Whenever she's mm -hmm. done with a situation, I need to go back to New York. Like that's mm -hmm. where she needs control. Mm -hmm. So she goes to New York. Will like flips out on both of them, Sean and her, whatever. Then we see in the last episode, it's kind of themed around Wendy reconnecting with her family. Yeah. And it's a really nice episode. So we see her going down to, and, and just, you know, fill in anything I missed because I didn't do a lot of notes on episode four. Mm -hmm. But she, uh, she goes down to Miami. She's with Will and they're sitting in a restaurant and they're waiting to meet Kevin. And what's the nephew's name? I thought it was Kevin as well. I think they have like a similar name. Oh, geez. Okay. Oh, God. But yeah, that but was like... She's meeting uh, with her son and another family member. Yeah, and um, Alex's brother, basically, yes, Finney. Yes. Yeah, her nephew. Yeah. Finney. yeah, her nephew. So they're, they sit down. She, they come in. They're late. They sit down. Kevin, in his eyes, you can see that this is... He hasn't seen her in a while. Yeah. And he is devastated in this moment. Like, he does he not know how to react. And she is, she's just not with it. You know, she, she's not lucid. She's not making much sense. And he is, he's devastated. And then we see her meeting with her dad. What did you think about that? Oh, the dad. Oh, he's so sweet. And Love it's so the sad that he's more lucid than she is at yes. his age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at least at this point, he's been told. So so what we learned from the documentary is that at least what they're saying, the filmmakers, what they had no idea that this was an issue, that she had any sort of mental issues. They just knew that she was trying to start a comeback and that she had an alcohol addiction and that mm -hmm. they were trying to document that. 
Mm-hmm. And along the way, they discover she has a whole bunch of health issues that are contributing to this, mm-hmm. to the fact that it's affecting her mental health and that she's not really there. So we do find out, you know, the diagnosis, which is like insane. But they don't say it till episode four. Till episode I think, four. I think it's the nephew that says it. And mm-hmm. then we get the black screen of death and the pr- it says the producers had never heard of this diagnosis until now. Yep. And I think that was them covering their ass. Like, we didn't yeah. know this was a thing. Because the family kind of kept it hush-hush mm-hmm. a little bit, which was interesting. So she's in Florida. Like I said, she's she's sitting with her dad. Oh, Amy, and- hold on. Let, let me go back to that. So if the fam- I'm thinking that they probably found out later on. Because had they known, I think they should have stopped the documentary. But like, no, she has this condition. Like, don't follow her around. So that's why I'm like, when did Maybe? they find out? Yeah, when did they find out? It's unclear. It's, it's unclear. unclear. But you're right. I mean, Kevin's one of the producers. List is a producer on the documentary. He yeah. could have stopped it. Absolutely. He could have. Yeah. Um, so she's visiting her dad and there's this moment with them on the couch and they start talking about her mother and she was very close to her mother. Yeah. And she's like, I really miss her. And the dad's like, I miss her too. I talk to her every day, but she's not talking back. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Her yeah. dad's adorable. She, again, six years old, Asbury Park. She's talking about it. She remembers buying them that condo, like I said, in Florida when uh, they were cold in the winters, yeah. which, you know, I get that. <laughs> and uh, it was just it was very sweet. So then we we finally get an interview with Wanda, who we had not seen through the entire documentary. Yeah, she didn't want to participate at first. Oh, wait, let me before Wendy goes away, because Wendy exits stage left through mm-hmm. through this. But before she does, we do get the scene in New York with her in Black China that you talked about. Yeah. And it's so endearing. And so did they, did you remember their beef? Yes. Because, okay, so this was back in the, well, I feel like the Kardashian age is still ongoing. God damn it. Oh God, we're Um, never going to get out of it. (laughs) But it was that time when Rob Kardashian, the the only male, um, Mm -hmm. he had gotten Black China pregnant. They were together and there were like all kinds of issues in terms of fidelity. There was always like rumors that she was stepping out on him or that it was just a toxic situation. And mm-hmm. she used to be a stripper. Black China started out as a stripper. So I think that Wendy would call her like, she's just a stripper. Like you can't t- turn her hoe into a housewife kind of situation. Oh, that was like okay. her stance on her. Yeah. So one of the headlines I issues. think was like, she came from the pole. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, Basically. yeah, yeah. So that she was Ugh. slut shaming her a lot. God, and then when bad. she had her on her show and she sat down with her and looked her in the eye, she changed her stance and was like, I'm going to call you Angela because that's your name. Like, yes. I see the real person. I don't see this. And persona. That's why people liked her because she would walk shit back. If she was right. wrong, if she, was she wrong. would admit it. Yep. Yep. So she. So Black China comes to see her and like you said, they're talking a few minutes and then you could see Angela, Black China, mm-hmm. start to, okay, this is not a good situation. But yeah. she like hugs her and like lies against her chest. Yeah, like she was she's crying. Like a little girl. It's so sweet. I mean, the connection that Wendy has with her is really beautiful. And I'm pretty sure it's because, because um, I don't know how much you know about Black China, but she had a documentary a few years ago with her mother. It was so, I never watched the full documentary. I just saw clips mm-hmm. on it online. Mm-hmm. So toxic, their relationship. Yeah. Like the mother straight up would punch her in the face on camera and curse her out and call her a whore. Oh my God. Like this is on camera on their TV show. Like this is how So what's happening off camera, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of thing that she was accustomed to. So Wendy being kind of like a mother figure makes sense. So I think Mm -hmm. in that moment when she realized, oh no, she's not really there. It was just so heartbreaking. Yeah. It was, it was moving. There is this like thread of motherhood throughout this. Like we see- you know, when well, I I believe what really shook Wendy's world was losing her mother. And we don't spend enough time talking yeah. about that. But I think that really pulled the rug out from under her. I mean, it's a really it's it's such a pivotal moment in a daughter's life when they lose their mother. Like if if they're close to their mother, not everybody yeah. is, but everybody has a mother figure even. Right. Mm-hmm. So like losing that mother figure in your life is so devastating and then seeing how she she's a surrogate mother for others, but she also struggles yeah. with her relationship with Kevin. Like, she really wants to be a good mother. And she yeah. just keeps, I feel like, trying to buy him. 
You know, that's it's part really, of the impression I got mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. even when she meets up with them at that lunch, she's like giving him a shirt, like here's some clothes. These are fancy. Like, oh, know, so that's them. later when they go to the dinner. So they go yeah. to a dinner with her brother, who we had never met. Mm -hmm. So Wendy and the brother, the dad, I didn't see Wanda there. The, no, the just two, the nephew. Yeah, the nephew and, and Kevin. Mm -hmm. So they're all sitting there, and Wendy orders a fucking drink. And the brother's like, no, 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 no. Under his breath, constant, like just trying to get her to no, no, like, no, no, it. no. Don't start it. Yeah, he was like, don't, you don't want to start. You don't want to start. Like he was trying not to make a big deal on camera. You could tell he was like, no, 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 come on. Let's not yep. do that. Let's not do that. Yep. And at one point they go somewhere. I think it's when they went to the hotel in Florida. Uh, Will's calling room service and is like, if there is one drop of alcohol delivered to this room, I'm going to come down there and light your kitchen on fire. <laughs> like he yeah. is like no 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 but again is he only doing that on camera we don't know we don't know yeah. at one point though will is exasperated and he's like i think somebody has to be here 24 7 with her yeah. so that told me maybe he's not buying i don't i don't know but somebody's getting this woman alcohol because she cannot go to a store and get it herself literally she doesn't you could tell by this documentary that she does not leave her house on mm -mm. like unescorted mm -mm. like somebody's that's getting shop where she went to get the, what is it, the e-cigarette or whatever, the yeah. vape. Yeah. That is literally three blocks away from her house. Yeah. Because I've been to that. There. Um, there's a little, like, subway or something right next to it. Like, it's right there. Yeah. It's literally, she, like, three blocks away. And she cannot go on her own without a car. No, she can't get there. We see another common thread that we didn't hit on is, or not a common thread, but a, a minor sub, subplot, is that she's trying to sell her stuff. Because she doesn't have yeah. money, right? So she's trying to sell her clothes. She's trying to sell her decor. She she needs to move into a place that's on the first floor. That's all one level. So she's doing that kind of stuff. And she keeps fucking that up, right? Like the yeah. people come to help her. And she's so drunk, she's throwing up. And then she's passing out. Like it's it's hard to watch. It's, it is. It's really hard to watch. And then I asked myself this, and I'll ask you. When you, if you were watching this... And we didn't know her diagnosis at all. Mm -hmm. Which I didn't when I was watching it. I didn't we, know. We didn't until the documentary came out, like towards the end, mm -hmm. that they kind of revealed mm -hmm. it. But would you be like, this is exploitive because this person is clearly an addict and they're out of yes. it? That was That's my how impression. I felt. Yes. That was my impression. That was my thought. I feel very similarly. I know it's become like a cultural joke, but about like the David Hasselhoff cheeseburger video. Like oh, yeah, I remember recording that. and making fun of people who are struggling with addiction or at their worst is the worst kind of exploitation, in my opinion. It's gross. Yeah, it's really it's gross. gross. So I was like, in that perspective, it's not just her being like a diva because it's different if she was just like, I just want to be famous. And she's doing like stupid right. shit to be famous. Yeah. And there's no like real repercussions. And she's yeah. just like a tabloid, like fame whore kind of thing. I'd be fine with that. I'd be like, yeah, be outrageous, spend money, do whatever you want. It's yours. But when there's a mental health issue, when there's addiction, it makes me feel weird because it's like, this person, does no one else see what I'm seeing? And can, can you not see that? And there was a point, another thing that speaks to her mental illness is also, she was standing in front of the mirror. She was the skinniest she's ever been. And she's like, I finally have a thigh gap. And she started crying. And I was like, yeah. I've been there. That is yeah. a low point. Yeah. Because she was looking point. fragile. And she's like, yeah. I have a thigh gap. And she's sobbing of joy. That yeah. is when you're in a bad mental headspace. As someone yeah. who has dealt with anorexia, I know that headspace, it's not a good place to be. So even just with that, I would be like, she's not good to do this. She needs intense inpatient therapy. Yes. And ironically, I think that's what she's getting now. Yeah. I so think at the so end too. of the documentary, they they whisk her away and she is put somewhere by the guardian. And we Will don't hear from her to, again. No more nope. updates from her. Will had to call the guardian and be like, she has to get put away. Like mm -hmm. this is it's too much. And they, they did have, not disclose to the family where she is. Nope. So they, they did not is. tell the family where she is. Apparently, according to Wanda, the family can't call her. So she is away at an undisclosed location. But now we hear phone calls from her mm -hmm. to Wanda. And, and she sounds lucid and she sounds yeah. good. Yeah. And um, so that's kind of how we end it. Like now, so the end is that the family are fighting to get guardianship. They want yeah. the guardianship. Wanda said... Wells Fargo approached me 
They told me they needed a guardian for her. I said I would do it. You have to take a couple classes. I said I would do it. Then all of a sudden this wall went up. Yeah. And it was no contact or whatever. It, it's just so scary to me that these guardianships can take place yeah. where your your family doesn't even have a say. Yeah, because there are some instances with some families, obviously. We saw that with the Britney situation where her own family was like milking her dry, which is another thing that was we saw in the documentary for a quick bit when she yeah. was talking about Britney's dad and how awful he was that she her family deserves death. So then people were like, this is her karma. This is why she's like this. And I'm just like, okay, first of all, she went too far with that. But again, mm -hmm. she was not in a good mental health situation either when she said these things. And she was probably feeling for Britney because she's also, she has no control over her own life. So she's like, fuck those people. So of course she's going to have that reaction. Well, and Wendy Williams, I I'm not excusing what she's, you shouldn't wish to Oh, no, anybody. you should never say that. Yeah. But she is a self-made woman, mm -hmm. right? So she probably feels this exceptionally hard. Yeah. Like a, a person who is self-made and creates their own success should not be cut off from that. Yeah. And I think that that is what probably she connected with Britney Spears on. Like Britney Spears yeah. did all that hard work herself. Were her parents entitled to some of it? Of course. They're probably the ones who drove her to practices and did right. this and did that. And, you know, and trust her me, mom parent, like quit her job or whatever. Yeah. To be with them. So then you, take, you take a reasonable salary. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or you let your kid buy you a house. Buy me a house. That, yeah. Then we're even. That's fine. Um, Note to Amy's children. If you want to buy me a house, I'll take it. And then um, we'll if you want to buy Leslie a house, I can take it too. <laughs> if you just want to buy houses, are you guys millionaires at this point? <laughs> All right. So I wanted to tell you about, um, I watched Alex. She was on The View two mm -hmm. weeks ago. And you have some notes in of after stuff as well, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she comes on The View. And this was, again, two weeks ago. She says, Wendy wanted to do this to tell her story. She said, we all saw it play out publicly in the blogs. Now, I can't remember what documentary I was covering, but somebody else was just going off about blogs. I'm like, blogs aren't a thing anymore, guys. Stop I talking know. about blogs. It is such a big thing on Housewives, like for the blogs Bravo celebrities. <laughs> they still talk. No, like literally reunions and feuds, season long feuds are held over blogs, over headlines <laughs> on a blog, realitytv.com posted that I did this and it's a whole uh, feud. Anyway, it's a whole blogs thing. aren't a thing. So she says the family knows there's something. So this is again, Alex, the family knows there's something going on beyond addiction and that this is 100% medical as well. She says there were people around her that were suspicious and we worried that she might not be aware of what she was signing or what she was doing. Mm -hmm. She says they made, they finally made contact with the guardian after filming, but the guardian has been keeping Wendy under wraps. The family can't reach her. Even when the grandfather was either sick or dying, oh they could God. not reach Wendy to tell her that her father was sick or dying. She said the family was starting to have conversations about her money and her mental state. And then, like I said, all of a sudden the wall came down. She does say Wendy's still in the facility. She's been there since last April. The family doesn't know where it is. She can call them, but they can't call her. Alex says um, Wendy does sound better and she seems to be doing a lot better. So that was kind of where she was at. And then on The View, Sunny, I think, is the lawyer. Mm -hmm. She was talking about, like, how this has become a popular practice with guardianships being appointed independent of families and how problematic that is Yeah, to get control back of your life. And then yeah. I, I just also have a note that Wendy has been diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal dementia, which can be alcohol-induced. Yeah. And that's a similar notes? diagnosis to Bruce, Bruce Willis recently, the frontal yeah. dementia yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, so from my notes is just a quick update in terms of what has gone on since the documentary. So okay. Sean, the publicist, has been fired, no longer works. Neither does Will Shelby. He's no longer her manager. Oh, so Okay. I yeah. don't know if this was the guardianship that decided to get rid of them, but the They're media done. company of the documentary, a and &E, has been sued for releasing documentaries. So the lawsuit claims that Wendy didn't have all the mental capacity to 
authorize the documentary. So that's their argument. And the filmmakers still stand by the claim that they did not have any knowledge of Wendy's health condition mm-hmm. when they started mm-hmm. filming. And right. that they were just told that she had an issue with alcohol. So essentially they were just capturing her comeback, thinking mm-hmm. she was just going to be battling alcohol and that's it. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So here's my question for you. Do you think this should have been released? I mean, I'm glad it was for my own sake. Cause I, you know, I, I'm curious. She's a public figure. I'm curious as to what happens with them, but it's so exploitive. I feel so bad because I know that her family is saying, well, she wanted to tell her side of the story, but Wendy with full mental capacity, I don't think she would want to see herself without a wig on camera. Like that's not her. Yeah. Yeah. She would have never done that. Who was she with? Black Gina when she did that? Yeah. Yeah. Which which speaks to their relationship that she felt safe in that moment to be able yeah. to do it. See, but there was I a point think... she was laying in bed and she was just like almost comatose and then the camera was on her. She's like, are you filming me? They're like, yeah. And then she's like yeah. smiling. And I'm like, what is happening? So for somebody like me who didn't really know much about Wendy Williams and what I did know, what I did see was scandalous and, you know, mm-hmm. on TMZ and in the blogs, Leslie. Um, <laughs> I think this humanized her it for did, me. Yeah. And it really shined a light on addiction. It shined a light on fame. Mm-hmm. It shined a light on, I think, you know, the specific struggles to being a black woman in this country i think it was i don't know like i re i walked away from this having a lot more respect for wendy williams than i did going into it but i i watch everything through an empathetic lens you know what i mean so like i don't know if somebody would have seen this and been like oh my god she's a train wreck i saw it as it was a sad story and i'm sure it was a sad story Mm -hmm. it was it made sense then everything started to kind of make sense when they were saying like i did see that that was like infamous when she was dressed that Halloween episode, dressed as a Statue of Living, she just faints on air. I remember seeing that yeah. being like, what yeah. is happening? Yeah. So those were like minor signs that there were things going on. Even while she was before COVID, she would lose her train of thought mid conversation mm-hmm. on the air. And people, I remember, I remember things. like TikToks going around. Yeah. Look at the buz- bizarre shit Wendy Williams did on her show today. Like, I remember that. Yeah. They, they were in the zeitgeist, even if I wasn't paying attention to them. There was this narrative that Wendy Williams was losing. Unhinged. It. Yeah. Yes. And I feel like this, again, I come away from this saying w- Wendy Williams is a person worth saving yeah. and needs to be saved. And I don't know if I would have felt that way before. Right. Because we didn't know. I guess it it did humanize her. You see her with her family. Not only that, you see how the community rallies around her. Yeah. yeah. Even in her darkest moments, they're like, we still love you. You could do this. We'll see you soon. You know, yeah. everybody's so hopeful for her. Mm-hmm. And, and I just think that she's such a... a I don't want to say role. Mo- well, I guess like a role model for some of these girls, yeah, young women. And it's like this. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just feel like we I've never really seen a documentary like this before. Right. I feel like I do believe that she consented to it. I do believe that she yeah, had a good, re- good rapport with the directors. And like, I didn't feel gross about it. Mm hmm. Which I thought I would, 100%. I thought I would. But I do feel like, like, even her niece was like, Wendy wanted to do this to tell her story. And I could could see that. Yeah, Yeah, she succeeded. We now know her story. Yeah. Rather than TMZ's version of it. Exactly. But I could totally see that. Because there, I mean, one of the episodes is titled, like, I just want to be famous. Like, that's all Mm -hmm. she cares about. If she wants to go to a place, she's like, are there celebrities there? If not, I don't want to go there. Like, she just wants to be where the fame is. But, with the adoring public. Right. But what we see in those, but I think what's underlying that, right? Because when she does go out and she's doing that, we see those connections with the fans. Yeah. Like, and oh, this is why she does it. That's the dopamine hit. Yeah. Is the connections with these these women or these, you know, fans of hers. Yeah. Like it's all about connectivity. And yeah. 
I don't know. I, 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 like I said, I have more respect for her now, I think, which is wild. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I think we've said it all. I think so too. We covered everything. Those were four lengthy episodes. It was riveting though. Like it really yeah. pulled me in. I, I watched it. No problem. Like zipped right through them. Yeah, Normally me too. I, I have like, a hard time phone. concentrating. Do you do you have to have like a game or something going on your phone while you're watching TV? Yeah, I usually have like <laughs> my iPad. I have like the coloring book app. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just can't focus on one thing. I'm like, I need distraction. I can't either, but I did not need that with this. No, with like, this I, I, was, I was just riveted. I kept pausing and pulling out my notebook, like, oh my God, did she just say this? Because I was like, I know. what is happening? I know, I know. Well, I thank you very much for your service. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm just an old lady who knows not much about pop culture. (laughs) (laughs) And I just know a lot of it because I don't know why I like this kind of stuff. I always go to you for everything. Like, can you explain this? Can you explain this? Can you explain this? For some reason, I retain this kind of stuff in my mind. Nothing Mm -hmm. that's useful, by the way. Only junk. That's all I retain in here. Like, I have full knowledge, like, full memory recall of the clueless like screenplay like I could dictate the entire movie I could dictate all of Dirty Dancing look who's talking like why is that in my head I do not know that's important shit that's important shit um let me tell you the funniest thing ever was when I meant to tag you in Little Miss Recaps Backdoor Friends Facebook group and say can you break down what's going on with Andy Cohen and this coke rumor (laughs) and but I accidentally did it on my main Facebook page and then I just left it there I'm like you know what now you guys are gonna see the the trash that I am that I'm talking was, about Andy going. Oh, I love video. that. I was just like, oh, girl, let me tell you. It was so funny because there's so many other podcasters and people that'd be like, I've hung out with Andy. He's never offered me Coke. Now I feel insulted. Do you, you know? think <laughs> that he will stay the face of this? Will of he weather Bravo? this storm? I think so. I think Bravo fans are really loyal to the show and just mm-hmm. to the mm-hmm. overall messiness. Mm-hmm. Like people weren't that outraged. They're like, "Oh, he's he offered you coke. Oh, Andy Cohen. Ah. You mm-hmm. know, like no one was mm-hmm. like surprised. They were like, right. "Yeah, everything seems a little crazy and wacky." Have you there. watched New Year's Eve with Anderson Cooper? He's clearly on something. <laughs> no allegedly, offense. allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. No offense, but he's clearly <laughs> drunk on those shows. <laughs> no, I mean, even on Watch What Happens Live, his talk show, his nightly talk show thing. Mm-hmm. They do shots. Like, with it, oh, they have drinking okay. games throughout okay. the show. They do shots. And if you're sober, celebrity that shows up, then they'd be like, and you're going to take a shot of water. Like, they make sure okay. to say that. And then, okay. you know, they all, right. all do shots. So it's okay. like a whole very party culture. So that mm. does not surprise me. Okay. All right. Well, guys, you heard it here first. If you have any housewives questions, direct them to Leslie DJ. <laughs> she's in our group. She's one of our yeah. favorites. And she's she's happy to answer. And why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? Well, you can find my podcast, Sinister Girls, on all the streaming platforms. I have to do it. Sinister Girls. (laughs) I love that song. Tatiana Calco wrote that. That was awesome. Um, We will have new episodes in April. Right now, I'm just finishing up this recruitment of my dissertation. Mm -hmm. But you can follow Mm -hmm. me at Sinister Girls. I've actually, until TikTok gets banned nationally, Mm -hmm. I've been posting a lot of TikToks on the Housewives, just Housewives out of context. Okay. Because sometimes they say random shit and then I just, you know, like mash it up with like a movie clip or with like a song or something. So okay. there's this one scene from this season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills with Dorit. She's kind of problematic on this show just because of the microaggressions, but we'll deal with that later. But <laughs> Kyle Richards had a white party, which everybody dressed in white at SoFi Stadium. Okay. And Denise Richards shows up with like something with hot pink, like pink and white. And she was like, does she not know it's... A white party. And the way oh, she said it, I was oh. like, oh, I could do so much damage with that. Okay. So I took that and I messed it up with the clip from White Chicks and kind of made mm. it like a little thing. Mm. So I thought maybe you would mash it up with Prince Harry wearing his Nazi uniform. Oh, no, that's a little too that much. Party. At that party. <laughs> I know, right? White party. I know, right? I don't think I have footage of that, but I just used, like, oh, white chicks. white nationalist party? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I just used a clip of, of white chicks and kind okay. of mashed it up. Right. And it's getting a lot of hits. And then there's and what, a new what's your one. handle there? Is it Sinister Girls? It's also at Sinister Girls. Okay. So I've just okay. been doing those. And I did another one on the reunion with um, Kyle Richards and her roommate okay. girlfriend. No one cares if you're gay, Kyle. Come out. Don't come out. No one cares. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Stop digging us around. Wasn't she on Little House on the Prairie? Yes. Yes, yeah, she was. Yes. She's an extra child star. She was in um what are the Halloween movies? She was like the little kid in the first yes. one and then she came yes. back as an adult. I remember that, yes. All right, my friend, thank you so much for doing this. Guys, Hi, if, Amy. if you Thank haven't you. already, follow Leslie, follow us at Little Miss Recap on Instagram, Jump In Backdoor Friends, our Facebook group. And if you like what you hear, join us over on Patreon, Supercast, or Apple Subscriptions, where we talk cults, soap operas, and murder. I mean, awesome. I don't know what else you can think there. Okay. That's everything. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. <laughs>